there everyone, Captain Sean here with a special top 10 list spotlighting the best Disney Channel movies ever made. Now I just have to say right off the bat, I didn't grow up during my childhood and most of my teenage years with cable, so I was never part of the young target demographic groups that Disney Channel usually aims their movies at, but upon getting cable later in life, I did get a chance to check out the many movies I missed out on growing up, which resulted in me wanting to make a top 10 Disney Channel movies list about a year ago. But that was made after I'd only seen about 20 Disney Channel movies. Since then, I've seen another 20 movies based on recommendations I got from many people. And after seeing so many Disney Channel movies now, I feel more prepared than ever at this point to make a true top 10 list. For this video, we'll be looking at the movies that have the best acting, best story, best all-age appeal, and more importantly, are just best that wanting you to come back and view it again and again. And a reminder, I didn't grow up with Disney Channel, so I'm really picking a lot of these movies based on what entertained me as an adult, and not long ago when I was a kid. So, let's get on with our top 10 list. Although, that being said, I did sit through watching a ton of Disney Channel movies recently, and I don't want my time watching them to go to waste. So as a fun bonus early in this video, I'll give you all a quick run of the Disney Channel movies that are on my top 20 list. Number 20, Smart House. It's pretty average TV movie stuff, but it does have some nice moments about a family getting over a tragedy. Number 19, Camp Rock. It feels like it's trying too hard to be a high school musical wannabe at times, but it does have a few nice songs, most notably the song, This Is Me. Number 18, Sharpay's Fabulous Adventure. This high school musical spin-off movie might get overlooked for good reason, but it does feature the former antagonist of high school musical, Sharpay, finally growing in maturity as a character, which is very nice to see. Number 17, Invisible Sister, a decent movie starring Rowan Blanchard that has some good acting performances and a somewhat interesting scenario. Number 16, Quince. This fun movie about a former only child now having a whole bunch of younger siblings is a nice story about family, friendship, and discovering who you are. Number 15, Wendy Wu, Homecoming Warrior, an all-around fun action movie that feels like an episode of Power Rangers but without that show's more common tropes. Number 14, Teen Beach 2, a movie with not the best story, but it does have some very good dance numbers. The dance numbers to Best Summer Ever, and especially Gotta Be Me, are incredibly entertaining to watch. Number 13, Radio Rebel, a decent movie featuring a character who is insecure about expressing what they're passionate about. Number 12, Jump In, a pretty well-filmed and well-acted movie about a character following their dreams and pursuing what they're passionate about, only to have that character deal with the harassment that comes from people ridiculing them for that passion. Number 11, Camp Rock 2. Not the best TV movie story ever, but it does have a decent ending to its tale, and the dance sequences are amazing. This movie by far has the best filmed dance sequences of any Disney Channel movie ever. The dance of the song It's On is the absolute highlight of the film. And now, let's take things a little slower as we move on to the real part of this review, the top 10 Disney Channel movies. Starting with... Number 10, Adventures in Babysitting. The movie focuses on two teenage babysitters who are on a mission of finding a lost child, which then leads to a huge slew of wacky shenanigans. Now, the movie is essentially a series of wacky scenarios that are followed one after another. However, they work because they're all interconnected. The movie isn't a series of crazy antics, but rather a series of silly situations that build off of one another. Basically, each silly situation is born from the characters trying to solve a problem, but they fail, and that winds up creating another problem. You honestly feel so sorry for the main character in this movie, played by Sabrina Carpenter, because she really doesn't catch a break throughout most of the film. It's essentially the perfect template of what a movie designed to showcase wacky shenanigans should look like. Number 9. High School Musical Oh yeah, you knew this movie had to come somewhere on this list. This movie became a phenomenon when it premiered, and even though it probably got way too much hype, as a simple two-hour entertaining experience, yeah, this is a solid movie. Now, yeah, it is a little in-your-face with the cliché message of just follow your dreams, but clichés can be accepted if you have good actors, fun dancing, and a lot of good music. And that's what this movie has. Now, it's no secret several of the actors became big names after this movie, especially Zac Efron, and you can see that star potential when you watch this movie. Plus, 
The dancing is good, and the variety of songs is very welcomed. This movie redefined how musicals can be made for young people, and its impact on the musical genre as a whole is still being felt today. The story isn't too complicated, but it doesn't need to be. It's just solid fun. And now for... Number 8. High School Musical 2. Yep. It's the sequel that's just a few notches better than the original. The actors are decent enough in this movie, the dancing is still good, and the movie is fun. But aside from the better shooting locations, the one thing that makes this movie way better is the story. Now like the first movie, the main character Troy, played by Zac Efron, is tempted again to not stay loyal to his friends and his dreams. But this time it's done more realistically. This time he gets caught up in trying to move up the career ladder and pursue getting noticed by scouts for colleges he's interested in. And you know what? Those are very important goals. But this movie tells young viewers that if you lose your friends, your identity, and the values you hold close to yourself, then all of your important goals have less meaning. And that's a pretty good message. And for those wondering, yes, I loved High School Musical 3 even more than this. This was the franchise that knew how to grow and get better and better. But the third movie was shown in theaters and it didn't premiere on Disney Channel. So, let's just move on. Number 7, The Swap. Now this seemingly simple movie about body switching that, while telling a fun story, is also a story about gender identity and social norms. The story focuses on two troubled teenagers named Ellie and Jack, who don't like how their lives are going and wish they were the other. And then because of magic, that happens. But rather than just play that up for comedy, or have it be a story where the boy and the girl learn what it's like to be the other gender, the movie ingeniously allows this as an excuse for the characters to better view their own identity and what is acceptable for someone of their own gender. Now, the movie doesn't end with a clear-cut message of how males and females are supposed to act like, but it does address and challenge many stereotypes that males and females face in our world, and it's a pretty smart tale that anyone should check out. Number 6. The Color of Friendship this movie, based on a true story, takes place in the 1970s about a black American family who would invite a foreign exchange student from South Africa to live with them. However, the foreign exchange student from South Africa, who is white, thinks the family she's going to live with is white as well. So there's some immediate tension here. Now I'll admit, you're going to be confused by this movie if you're not familiar with the concept of apartheid and the story of Steve Bicko from South African history in the 1970s. And yet, it can still work for most people, as the story is mostly told from the point of view of two teenage girls, one from America, one from South Africa, who learn about each other's cultures and the inequalities certain groups of people have been facing in both countries. Now yeah, the two main characters in this movie that have different skin colors and come from different countries don't like each other at first, and then predictably become good friends and learn to be more tolerant of one another. But the way the movie handles it is done very realistically, especially since it was based on a real-life story. Ironically, though, this is the one Disney Channel movie I would recommend not showing to young kids. It's a lot to take in if you're not already familiar with this era of history. Plus, there's two scenes where the characters in the movie speak of some very racially offensive words. Not because they're insulting each other, but because they're just talking about how certain people are labeled in the different countries. But yeah, you better make sure any young viewers watching this movie understand that they shouldn't repeat these words out of context. Overall, this is a very solid and smart movie. But you might wonder, why is this movie not number one on this list? Well, I'm basing this list on an overall entertaining movie. And while this movie is solid, it might have done better if it had featured some stronger actors and maybe a bigger film budget. Not to say anything is bad here, though. The movie did win an Emmy Award and the NAACP Image Award, and one of the actresses in the movie, Shadia Simmons, wound up doing a lot of acting roles after this movie. It's just not a movie I watch again and again. The next three, though, I definitely do watch again and again. Including... Number 5. Phineas and Ferb Across the Second Dimension. An amazing action comedy that I highly enjoy. Now I'll admit, you're going to be really confused if you've never watched the Phineas and Ferb TV show before this movie. But since I believe Phineas and Ferb is the best all-age TV comedy cartoon you could ever see, it's natural this movie winds high up on this list. The movie breaks a lot of the norms from the TV show, such as the character dynamics you never get to see, plus seeing our usual carefree characters in much more action-oriented scenes. Plus, like the show, the comedy is really solid, and the songs from the show's usual creative team are just wonderful, especially their more rock-and-roll-oriented songs. 
The final action sequence in the movie, though, is so weird and so different than a typical movie action scene, and yet it's just so awesome to watch. An epic sight to behold. So after checking out a few episodes of the TV show, I highly recommend checking out this epic movie. Number four, Lemonade Mouth. Now this movie is what I consider to be the much more realistic version of High School Musical, with a much stronger series of life lessons and a much more realistic and relatable tale for young viewers watching. This movie focuses on five high school teens that are social outcasts in their own way, but are also very musically gifted. So when they begin jamming together one day, they eventually start a band. Not just for the sake of singing though, but so that they can give a greater voice to those that have none. Plus, each teenage character in this movie has a different and yet still believable backstory that connects to the struggles they're facing. And it'd be hard to find a real life teenager who can't relate in some way to at least one of the characters in this film. Now, the music is nice in this movie, but what makes this tale work are its well-picked actors and its very well-thought-out story. I was taking multiple child and teenage development classes and sociology courses in college at the time I watched this movie, and the story of this film really hits some of the issues teens in our modern-day society face. If you want to know more about this movie, check out the review I made on Lemonade Mouth back when it first premiered. It's somewhere on this channel, just go look for it. Number 3. Kim Possible, So the Drama the one Disney Channel movie that has everything you need for a fun movie experience. It's got action, comedy, drama, romance, goofy shenanigans, commentary on teenage culture, homages to popular male action movies, similarities to teen chick flicks, great actors, great writing, and this movie really does have everything. Now, this movie takes place at the end of the third season of the Kim Possible TV series. The show was already very solid, but the movie cranked everything to the max. I'd like to make a list about everything that's good in this movie, but that list would probably go on for way too long. But I will say that while the movie is good when it features lots of action, it's the jokes in this movie that happen around those action sequences, particularly with the villains that are completely hysterical. You have definitely lost it. My latest research project, Teenage Wasteland. I will get inside her high school head. I will know Kim Possible's fatal flaw. Stevens, progress report. What up, Dr. D. Diggity Dog? We've lost Stevens. But the real heart of the movie comes from its romance story between Kim and her best friend, Ron Stoppable. And actor Will Friedle does a commendable job at getting his character, Ron, to speak some really heartfelt dialogue in this movie, while still being the funniest person in the room. Something's different now. I mean, there's something between us. Oh, am I kidding? That's not different. Something's been there a long time. Mm. Ah, thanks, buddy. I think I'm ready. Not just for the dance, either. But to do what no man should ever have to do. Talk about his feelings. And the final payoff we saw was something that longtime fans really, really loved. Number two, True Confessions, a very underappreciated movie with a great story, great cast, and great concept. The movie focuses on a high school girl named True who has a couple of fun friends, has dreams of fame, and a flawed but still loving family. This seems simple enough, but the one thing that immediately sets this family movie apart from others is when we learn that True has a twin brother named Eddie who is autistic. The movie is essentially a slice of life of what it's like for a family to deal with and live with a teenager who is autistic. And as someone who has worked with autistic teenagers before, this movie hits every tiny check mark of exactly what it's like. You could write a 10 page paper based on how incredibly accurate this movie identifies what many autistic teenagers are really like. And the absolute highlight of this movie is Shia LaBeouf who plays the autistic teenager. And this early acting role of his is easily the very best role he's ever played. I don't know what kind of research or preparation he did before he took on this role, but Shia LaBeouf is so convincing in this part that if I didn't see him in other roles, I would have thought he really was autistic. And just to be clear, autism is a very broad spectrum, so not all autistic teenagers are like LaBeouf's character. But this movie does handle stupendously well exactly what all families that have someone with a disability truly go through. And it's only number two because the ending does drag a bit after you've reached what you think is the story's climax, but even then, there's still some smart stuff to see near the end. A must-see movie for everyone, everywhere. And now for number one, Tiger Cruise. An absolutely perfect movie. No exaggeration. 
The movie takes place almost completely on a Navy ship, where for one special week, many of the Navy officers' family members are on board for a special Tiger Cruise. However, this movie takes place in the month of September in the year 2001. You see, just days into the cruise, the September 11th attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon happen. And when the news of the attacks happens, the entire movie becomes the characters' reactions to what is going on. And because they're trapped on a Navy ship on lockdown, no one can contact their families. And because the Navy officers are hard at work, all these family members can only turn to their fellow strangers for help. What the movie brilliantly does, though, is the main family members in the story aren't just teenagers. You've got little kids, preteens, teens, and even older adult parents of these Navy officers on board. Thus, you truly get a perfect broad range of what all ages were experiencing during this tragedy. Plus, once the characters are on the Navy ship, it never cuts away to any other location. Nearly every shot of this movie is with the characters trapped inside the ship, just reacting to the news they're hearing. As someone who lived through this very same ordeal, I can definitely say this movie captures exactly what it was like when 9-11 happened. I wasn't on a Navy ship, but I too was trapped at a location I was very unfamiliar with when this happened long ago. And the confusion the characters feel is exactly what myself and others around me at this time experienced. And the reason the movie works is, it isn't about the country's leaders from that time period. It's about the regular people from that time period. It's about regular human beings reacting like regular human beings do when tragedy strikes. It's not just about the importance of family, but about the importance of helping strangers out too when they're in distress. It's about love and understanding, even when it feels like the world around you is ending. The movie is well paced, well acted, well directed, well shot, and pretty much absolutely perfect. I'm honestly surprised this movie was never put in theaters, but it's probably because it looks very low budget. There's no action in this movie, and like I said, it nearly completely takes place on this one ship. But the movie takes its low-scale environment and makes it completely work. This was an excellent piece of filmmaking that proves that sometimes TV movies can be better than anything you've seen in theaters.